Hey folks, plug-ins, hybrids, electrics, and more. We're gonna talk to Dr. Mazen Hamoud on today's episode of Geek Beat. I'm John P, let's do this. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by... Blenda.com. Hey guys, I've got Mazen here. Mazen, you have a very long and difficult title. You are like the Head of Electrical Systems. Otherwise known as Chief Engineer. Nice, <laughs> nice. I like, that's of much easier. Of electrified powertrains. Uh, electri electri okay, I like Chief Engineer. And uh, first of all, thanks for joining us. I, I appreciate it. I know that everybody here appreciates you uh, joining us here on Geek Beat. And we are very geeky, so anything electrical just gets us excited, even if it's vehicles, okay? Um, now, I have this theory, and I, I want to run it by you. I have a theory that we are at the very beginning of this electrical power age, and eventually every car Ford is showing off, and every car here at the auto show is going to have electrical drivetrain components in it. What do you think about that? First of all, I like you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Frankly, That would mean job security for you, right? <laughs> Frankly, this, this is what I believe, too. Oh, and good. The, the conventional wisdom, however, has been that you start with the gasoline engine, then you go hybrid, then plug-in hybrid, and then all electric. Where I stand on this, though, is that I think the plug-in hybrid is really the ultimate solution. The electric car will always have this range anxiety and will always have the challenges of how quickly you can recharge it and then the infrastructure to recharge it. The ultimate freedom that gives you the, the best of both worlds is the plug-in hybrid like our fusion energy or our CMAX energy. There you can charge the big battery in the plug-in hybrid and use it like an electric car and the Fusion Energy and CMAX Energy have an all-electric range once the battery is fully charged, up to 21 miles. And then once the battery is depleted from the charge that you put in from the utility, the vehicle turns into like a full electric, yeah. uh, hybrid electric vehicle. It has a gasoline engine uh, with a fuel tank and it still has the battery. It's the same battery working like a virtual hybrid battery. Interesting. It's not a separate battery, it's the same big battery that once it goes down to a certain level, we start using it like a full hybrid battery. Well, let me ask you about that because I've noticed and when I've driven these vehicles, it almost seems like there's two batteries. And I wondered, is one of them like a virtual, I tend to think of like a virtual machine running inside of a full operating system. But when you deplete the battery, maybe it says you're starting at 20 miles and you go down to zero. Then it switches the gas engine on and another little battery appears. And that little battery is always like half charged or maybe two, I've never seen it fully charged, but it's, it's partially charged and it seems like the car is you, it, the gas engine will still turn off sometimes and it'll just roll on electric so how, how does that battery partition work and why why even do that at all and this is really the, the power of software because that, that display that you see in, in our cluster there is a big battery which is uh, the plug-in hybrid battery and it's got the number of miles that you can drive yeah. all electric and again, once it gets to a certain state of charge, SOC of the battery, it, so the display switches in your cluster, and obviously this is done by software, and we're giving you an indication that now you switch to full hybrid uh, electric vehicle. Yeah. And, and that full hybrid display looks exactly like our, the sister vehicle of the plug-in hybrid, which is our full hybrid vehicle. And really the vehicle operates the same way. So we maintain a certain level of charge in the plug-in hybrid battery to make it work and operate like a full hybrid. And you see it at 50% because this is the optimum uh, state of charge for us to allow to take in uh, energy when on re regeneration, when you're braking and decelerating or going downhill, but also gives you enough energy to assist where needed or to drive full electric. Yeah. You can turn the engine off because our full hybrid 
also does turn the engine off in many operating conditions. When you have sufficient charge in the full hybrid battery, the engine turns off and you're driving all electric. And in fact, the electric capability in our hybrids is such that you can drive on the highway up to 85 miles per hour all electric. Let me ask you another question about the battery recharging, the, the regenerative braking and stuff. Um, is that the only way that the hybrid portion of the battery gets recharged? Could you be driving for so long that you just run out of hybrid battery? No, the hybrid battery is, is really charged in two ways. One is through regenerative braking and during deceleration. The other way is from the, electric, from the gasoline engine. Okay. And what so it, the alternator might shove some power its way on occasion just to make sure it's, it's where it needs to be? Right, it's, it's really the, the generator, which is another electric motor. So our transmission is really a, a, an electric, an eCVT, continuously variable transmission. Where, where there, is really, there are no gears that change. We control the speed of the engine with the uh, two electric motors. One we call the generator, one is the, is the traction motor. And the generator is what, uh, what we do. It's a power split architecture. So the engine, the gasoline engine, as you know, has a best uh, BSFC location, which is brake specific fuel consumption, usually happens to be at higher loads. So in normal non-electrified powertrains, sometimes you, you run less efficient and you rely on the transmission gears to put you at the most efficient operating condition, but with discrete gears, you're limited by how, uh, the freedom of operating always at the best, uh, most efficient point. With the uh, hybrid, with the generator being able to control the engine to the best BSFC point, we are able to charge the bed, direct some of the power that's in excess of what the vehicle needs to continue moving, and we use that to that excess to charge the battery. And then once we have a certain charge level, a certain SOC, we turn the engine completely off, and we start draining that energy Again, bringing back the SOC to about 50%, which is optimum where you want to be. You know, it sounds so complex, but in reality, I know these systems are kind of, in, in some ways, simpler than a traditional just gas, the way a gas motor works. I mean, when we're using it in electric mode, it's basically as simple as it could be. We've got a battery, we've got a, an engine, a motor, and we just spin it with the battery. You know, it's, just, it, it's, it's hard to think about these systems in different terms than we have been. So this, these vehicles don't even have an alternator because they don't need it because they have a generator, I guess, right? right. Do you know what the two best things about lynda.com are? 24-7, um, you can do it in your PJs. No. Oh, what are the two best things? Number one, it's only 25 bucks a month for unlimited use. Yes, That's well, it ridiculous. starts at 25 dollars. Starts at 25 bucks. Number two. For education. If you go to Lynda.com forward slash geekbeat. Mm -hmm. That's with a Y, Lynda with a Y. L-Y-N-D-A.com. It's right down there. You get a free week of access, whatever you want to learn. Yes, so, so go try before that. you buy. Let us know what you're learning and share your knowledge with us. That's right, because we need it. Let's talk a little bit about things outside of just driving the engine. I know that, you know, we've got a normal car here. It's got an air conditioner, it's got a heater, it's got... Well, every gadget you can even imagine, and all of these things put load on the system. So how does that impact the way these new, newfangled drivetrains are working? So you mentioned the alternator, right? And this is typically uh, an accessory drive that's driven by the motor a with belt. a belt. Yeah. Same with traditionally a water pump or an AC compressor for the climate control. Well, one thing that's unique about our hybrids and the, the Fusion Hybrid and the C-Max Hybrid at Ford is that we eliminated all accessory drives. We went through great lengths to be able to eliminate that because th those cause waste usually in, in non-electrified powertrains because you're all, there are parasitic losses involved when you have a belt driving these accessory drives. So we went to an electric water pump that we operate on demand when, whenever the engine needs it, we just turn it on to the right speed using the minimum amount of power. Same with the AC. So we went to uh, electric AC, 
so the AC compressor is operated by the, by the electricity. And similarly with the steering, it's electric assist power steering and, uh, and so on. So we're, when you look at the engine, it looks totally different. There is nothing in the front. It, it is, uh, you know, no, no accessories. So the, the thing is, when you use a plug-in hybrid, uh, Fusion Energy or C-Max Energy, you start the day by, you know, overnight you're charging the battery so that in the morning you have a fully charged battery and you can use your car like an electric, electric vehicle. But you keep in mind that all these, uh, uh, the climate control and uh, everything else is using that electric energy as well. So as a driver, you get to decide where best to use the electric energy. Do I favor more uh, a very comfortable cabin, yeah. so I crank up the heat to, or the AC to the maximum, or do I want to maximize the electric range so that I make it to work and back without ever turning the engine on? And we have customers who tell us that they've had their Fusion Energy or C-Max Energy for six months, and they have not gone to the gas station once. And to them, That's like a dream, okay? You know, I mean, yeah, you have to play that game. Every time we drive electric vehicles, it, it forces you. It's like a video game, and you think differently. And you're like, do I really need to be that much hotter or colder, or can I get a few more miles of range out of this thing? It's amazing how it changes your behavior. And uh, w one thing for, for I want to mention is uh, in the cluster, we have something called Brake Coach, and it gives you a yeah. score on how much re regeneration you were able to achieve. And it is literally a video game. You turn the car into a video game. Well, I, I would, with a qualification yeah. that it is, it is really not distracting. It, no, uh, it's not. It really uh, it comes on pretty much when you're at a complete stop. And you're like, all right, how did I do this time? And you look at it, 96%. And really, our system is designed, you know, both the battery, the e-drive, and so on, is designed in a way to maximize the, the regenerative power that you can put into the battery in such a short time. But again, if you do panic stops or if you if you brake uh, aggressively, you're going to get a small, uh, yeah. lower score yeah. and say, okay, next time I should anticipate my stops, I should plan my stops, decelerate slowly, and then stop smoothly, which maximizes the amount of energy you can put back in the battery. Well, one of the other benefits of having a, you know, a more sophisticated powertrain like this is you can add on new features and new things that people weren't expecting. You mentioned, for example, that these vehicles have electric um, steering, basically. It's, it's all electric. So that enabled you to do some things like lane assist, where if you start drifting the camera, there's a camera in the front, it sees those lanes, and it kind of steers you back on course. This is great stuff. But also, you've got um, convenience features like the HVAC system, the stereo, and things like that. And you can control your car with an app now. That's right. <laughs> and, and that plug-in hybrid in particular, well, you have My Ford Mobile, which is really an app on your smartphone, or you can access it through the website, uh, that allows you to do uh, several things, one of which is control the state of charge of the battery. If you plug your uh, vehicle and uh, you know, you're, you're monitoring like uh, uh, how, how much energy do I have and, and you, you look at it, uh, everything is okay, nobody came and unplugged the, yeah. the car and you know, it, it avoids the, these sorts of situations where you think you're, you're charging and somebody comes in and takes the, the, the plug and charge their own car, it, it alerts you actually. And the other thing is you can set what we call go time in the morning. Uh, and what that allows you to do is, depending on the climate, if you want to condition your vehicle, if, if it's too cold, you want to turn the heat on, or if it's too hot, you want to turn the AC on, knowing that you're going to leave for work at a certain time. So you say, turn on, I'm, I'm going to leave at this hour, so please make sure that the cabin is fully conditioned, it's warm or it's cool. I want nice and to toasty when I get in the car. That's right. And uh, what the beauty of that is, you are plugged into the utility, so it can condition that. You're not giving up your battery range right. to, to try and overcome the temperature just to get started. You just get in and maintain it when you go. And, and this is where there's the most demand on the uh, HVAC system is to get that cabin to that stable temperature yeah. and you can do all that without cutting into the range. Nice. Well, I'm not kidding. We could go on all day because this is the stuff that I care most about here at the Auto Show. But we're going to be respectful of your time and you guys. Thanks for watching. Stick around. we got more continuing coverage here coming out of the Auto Show. I'm John P. You're watching Geek Beat TV. Thumbs up on YouTube, and we'll see you later.